In this video, we illustrate some of the most important functionalities of Excel Modeler and Excel adding allowing to estimate econometric models. After having installed Excel Modeler, the functionalities of Excel Modeler are available through its ribbon menu. Using Excel Modeler is very easy and consists of three steps. First, we create a model table that contains the data. Second, we build a model. And third, we test the model. To start using Excel Modeler, we then need to create a model table and import the data corresponding to the variables used to build the model. The model table can be saved in the workbook so that we do not need to reload the data each time we load the same workbook. The easiest way to load the data and create this model table is probably to select the top left cell of the spreadsheet to load and then press Ctrl A. This trick automatically selects a rectangular containing all the variables to use in the analysis. Then we right click on the selected region and select the option Add to Excel Modeler model table. A new spreadsheet is created containing some information needed by Excel Modeler to recover the variables including the sampling frequency. In this example, the sampling frequency is 1 and the data style is calendar because we have a daily data. The database actually contains the so-called three pharma French factors and excess returns on 12 industries portfolios. The purpose of this video is to illustrate how to estimate a three pharma French factor model using Excel Modeler. The next step is therefore to build the model. To do so, we use the option regression model. A new window pops up allowing to specify the model. We select variables BUSEC corresponding to the excess returns of the business and equipment industry portfolio as endogenous or left-hand side variable. By default, the first lag of BUSEC is selected as explanatory variable. We remove the lag of BUSEC because it should not appear in the estimated model. Then we select the explanatory variables. By default, a constant is included in the model and we now add three factors, that is to say, the market, small minus big, as well as high minus low. To get to the next step, we click on next. Several options are available and we are not going to use auto metrics to do automatic model selection in this video so that we can move on and click again on next. The estimation sample can be changed by dropping some observations at the beginning of the sample or at the end. There is also an option to select the standard errors. We select robust standard errors in this example. Here is the output. The parameters are estimated by ordinary least squares. The beta of the market is about 1. It is actually 1.12 and is highly significant. The beta of SMB is however not significant because its p-value is about 31 percent while the beta of HLM is negative and significant. The next step is to make some graphs. A very first graph is available by clicking naturally on the button graphics. The top panel graph displays excess returns of the endogenous variable in red, BUSEC in our case, as well as the fitted values in blue. This graph appears in a separate spreadsheet. We can copy and paste it, for instance, in a Word document. The bottom panel contains the residual of the model. More options are available via the button More. Under Graphic Analysis, we can get more graphs. We can select the graphs we want to display. 
Let me display the residual autocorrelation graph with 12 lags. This graph suggests there is no evidence of dynamic left in the residuals. The option further output allows, for instance, to print the correlation matrix of the variables. Let's choose this option. The output suggests that the correlation between market and SMB is 24% in the sample. The last step is to apply some misspecification tests to test the presence of serial correlation in the residuals. We choose a portmanteau test with 12 legs. The test confirms our previous finding that there is no serial correlation left in the residuals because the p-value of this test is about 60%. There are, of course, many more tests. To conclude this video, the residuals and fitted values together with the estimated parameters can be stored in a separate spreadsheet by clicking on the option stored.